You've tuned in to Dell's Discretion. Thank you. I am Dell. This is my podcast, and it's called A La Dell's Discretion. It's my opinion. It's my sayings guaranteed to me under the First Amendment while it is still intact. And folks, this is not a conspiracy theory. This is not trying to get people alarmed. It's not a scare tactic. The First Amendment is under assault. We've witnessed this the last several weeks. I follow, you know, I'm on Twitter a lot. I lost like 5,000 followers because a lot of them were suspended. A lot of accounts were suspended. And you know what? Most of those accounts were of my belief, of my philosophy. And the folks running it, if they don't agree with what you say, then what do they do? Well, they suspend you because you don't agree with them. Anymore, there's no room for debate. It is, if you don't comply, we're going to shut you up. And that's happening. It is happening. You know, one of the most recent ones was Mike Lindell. Co- you know, founder of My Pillow, best pillow in the world. This is an unpaid, unsolicited advertisement. But since we got the My Pillow, I've slept really, really well. It does make a difference. I didn't think it make a difference, but it does. His account, he was a supporter of the former president. His account is suspended. A lot of folks who supported that man are suspended. So take the microphone away from him. Take the platform away from him. There is no engagement of free speech. So it wouldn't surprise me if my account is eventually suspended. We're not living in the free speech days of old, folks. We're just not. But I'm going to try to give an encouraging talk here. And again, in the weeks to come, I will get more. um, I'll use my discretion a little bit more wisely. I'll go on some of my rants. I posted something on Facebook the other day. And basically, I can't remember it verbatim, but it was a, it was a picture. And it said, why can't these big tech folks suspend accounts that have child porn instead of conservatives? And you know what was happened to that post? Within seconds, Facebook blocked it out. They blocked it out, saying that there was fact checkers. There's no, how can you fact check an opinion? And it was a simple question. The big tech folks, why can't they suspend all the child porn and porn sites? When I get on Twitter, I see those feeds all the time. I just block them. But if you go against one political party, then you're suspended. So they're all messed up. Let me get on to my lesson today, and that's about determination, and it's about challenges. We all have challenges. I have them every day. You face them. Some are bigger than others. Right now, the whole world is in a challenge with this virus. But I want to go back to um, one of my favorite chapters. I'm I'm asked sometimes on podcasts and interviews. I, I, I wrote a book called Dugout Devotions, Inspirational Hits from MLB's Best by New Hook Publishers. It was published um, back in 2019. It's done really, really well, by the way. And we're coming out with Volume 2 here in about, in about a month. But I'm asked sometimes what are my favorite chapters in that book is. Because I interview professional baseball players about their faith and about their determination and what helps them get through a day. And at the time, back in 2018, I actually interviewed Brian Dozier when he played for the Minnesota Twins. I knew about Brian's faith, and so I drove up, drove up to Cleveland, got some time with Brian. He was gracious. Probably one of the most longer interviews. It went quite a while, actually. We had a really good conversation. But he talked about one of his challenges that he faced and how he got through it and how he didn't know it at the time, but it was a, quote, blessing in disguise. We've all had those. 
But you know, Brian told me that he didn't know what was going on at the time, but he does now. But at the time, he questioned it, and he was frustrated. Because he had passed on the opportunity uh, to enter the, to the MLB draft. He wanted to instead go back, finish his senior year in college, get his degree, you know, because he was a surefire bet for the for the MLB draft. And he had a stellar college career, you know, 224 career games, a 355 average, 55 doubles, you know, several triples, blah, blah, blah. He was, he was a good player. 2009, he took his team to the College World Series, so the guy could play baseball. During his senior year, you know, the year he was supposed to be in the in, a, in the MLB draft and possibly playing his rookie year, instead he chose to stay. Senior year, dove to make a play, shattered his collarbone. Shattered his collarbone. Eight screws and a plate were put into his right shoulder, his throwing shoulder. And discouragement set in. He thought, what did I do? What mistake, gigantic mistake did I make in not going to the draft? And he told me he went through some really va- some deep valleys, some struggles. He turned down the draft, just assumed it would be there next year. And he said, he said I never, in my wildest dreams, thought I'd bust up my shoulder. And it's no coincidence that Brian's favorite character in the Bible, as you guessed it, is Job. He doesn't compare himself to Job by any means, but he admired his perseverance and determination to live for God no matter what happened. And he told me that he learned through all of that and by what Job went through to really trust God through everything, even when it's tough. So instead of playing baseball, Brian had to adapt. He had to watch the game from the dugout. He waited and he learned. And you know what he did? He told me, he said he became a leader that year. He learned how to lead. He had to give advice. He had to coach. He had to encourage. And he developed this attitude that he told me about in his favorite movie was Braveheart and William Wallace. He said, never let them see you sweat. Even when you're down, be positive and strong. And that's tough to do at times. It's really hard to do at times. I've had to do it. And finally, he carried that attitude with him through physical therapy, through rehab. And finally, the NFL draft or the MLB draft came near. And he didn't know what to expect. He thought, I don't know if anybody will take me because he didn't hardly play much. But in the eighth round, the eighth round, mind you, the Minnesota Twins selected him in 2009. And he did not disappoint. In 2014, he became the first second baseman in the history of the team to record a 2020 season. That's 20 home runs and 20 stolen bases. He scored the second most runs in a season, 112. And the next year, fans selected him as a replacement in the Major League Baseball All-Star Game. His first at bat, ding, home run. 2016 became the first American League second baseman to hit 40 home runs in a season. He was grateful that the Twins gave him that opportunity. Again, he wasn't first, second, or third rounder. He was an eighth round draft pick. He waited. His waiting and his learning paid off. Perhaps he became more aware and appreciative during his time off the field. And he learned a valuable lesson during his recovery. He said to me, and I'll quote from my my book, the time I was hurt was a wonderful growing experience for me. I don't know if I'd be the leader I am today had it not been for that. You know, what lessons can you learn? You know, at that age, sometimes you're cocky and arrogant. You don't want to, you don't want to learn a lesson. You know, 
prepare yourself to deal with tough times. And the way to do that is by getting rid of your ego and learning. And this may sound hokey, but it's true. Read the Word of God. You'll find that will to keep going through life's difficulties. You know, it would have been easy for Brian to have that curse God and die mentality. And woe is me. But he didn't. He thought, never let them see you sweat. And by chance, you know, what challenges are you facing? Maybe your dreams have been shattered. I've had my share of disappointments. I'm still going. How do you cope with it? How do you get through it? He took a positive approach, became a leader. Maybe you got turned down for that big promotion. Maybe you are in a relationship that's gone south. You're thinking, I I can't get through this. And I don't want to get into scenarios because there's so many, and, and some of them can be really, really bad. You know, watch your friend die or coronavirus takes somebody near and dear to your heart that you didn't see coming. So again, you know, there's always a a more darker situation, but that's one thing God does provide is light. And a couple of ways that I pointed out to try to get through those challenges is put aside your ways, your expectations. I have found... And I'm not just saying this. I have found that when I get out of the way and try to stop make stop making things happen, that's when it all seems to come about. And it's not coincidence. God's wanting to say, hey, try your way. Now try it mine. And maybe next week I'll get into my story about that. Humility, sincerity is a great thing. Separate yourself from negative influences. Avoid those people who drag you down. Believe it or not, there's some folks out there who want to drag you down. Get away from them. I don't care if they've been your friend for 15 years. Get away from them. Put God first in your life. I've yet to hear anybody who's done that say, you know what, that was a bad thing to do. I've never heard anybody regret it. We're tithe. If you're going to church and have your problems, are you tithing? Are you giving what's God's back to him? Again, get in the word. I'm not saying being there for hours and hours a day. But spend a little time. Get in the morning. Read a chapter, two chapters, three or four verses. Take something away from it. And, you know, and I have a hard time with this one. Listen to, you know, the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I have problems, you know, disseminating which is which. Now, I'm, not, I'm not holier than thou. I don't know sometimes. But I can guarantee you this. He'll never take you down the wrong path. If you think it's the wrong path, then it is. Don't question it. Don't look for a sign or whatever. Just listen. Wait. You know, these steps aren't always easy to follow. But try them. Try to get that never let them see you sweat mentality and attitude that Brian developed. Got him through. And he trusted. And you'll get through it. And God will prepare you to put you back on the field. Again, Brian faced a major challenge. His whole life future was in jeopardy. He questioned why or doubted. That's when he became a leader. So if you're in a situation that's a challenge to you, make the best of it. You'll get through it. I mean, chances are you'll get through it. Make the best of it. Try a new approach. New attitude. Positive attitude. Positive people. And that'll get you through. Pray. Ask God to help you. You can never, ever, ever go wrong doing that. Thank you for tuning in.
Thank you for listening to Dell's Discretion. Tell your friends while I'm still here to tune in every Saturday morning or find it on Anchor, find it on Apple. It's, it's out there somewhere. Just find it, and we really appreciate it. And if you get time, grab Dugout Devotions. I think you'll like it. Dugout Devotions 2 coming out next month. Again, thank you for tuning in. Have a great day, and go out there and make a positive difference today.